Hi everybody, welcome to Celeste TV. Today I'm very excited to have with us Mr. Kao Chong, who is the CEO of Groupon Singapore, a group buying site and one of Singapore's fastest growing companies with 160 employees today after just three years. Now, Kao is a highly successful entrepreneur. He founded Economic in May 2010, which was acquired by Groupon in just seven months for a reported amount of $24 million. So Kao, walk us through your entrepreneurial journey. I think I've always been entrepreneurial, even during my childhood days. So my very, very first business was when I was in high school. Um, I saw an opportunity to sell Coca-Cola to my school's basketball team during the Saturday games because the Coke vending machine was a good 15 minute walk. So I thought, why not buy cans like at half price from say Kmart and then put them in a nice box and sell them right at courtside at, you know, full $1.50. So I made a hefty, you know, margin from that. and. Um, yeah, that was my very first business. Then I realized, yeah, well, actually, maybe this entrepreneurial stint is pretty fun. And it didn't just stop there, did it? Because you continued to start up other businesses after that. Well, that's right. Um, in university, I also set up a massage chair, um, wholesale and retail company. So there was an opportunity where we have an aging population in Australia. And I felt that massage chairs would be a wonderful product to have in people's households. So um, I went out and uh, sourced for the product. I imported them from Taiwan. Um, got them fully approved by the Australian authorities and then distributed them through furniture outlets throughout Sydney. And within the span of about 6 to 12 months, um, that business expanded across several cities around Australia. Some people might be intimidated to start their own business because they feel like entrepreneurism is something that maybe you're just born with it. Do you think anybody can be an entrepreneur mm -hmm. if they want to? Yes, I think there are certain um, elements or certain like core values that an entrepreneur should have. Um, and if you don't already have that, then maybe you can find a mentor or uh, someone who can like assist you in developing those values. So one of them might be being able to take uh, calculated risks. Yeah. So a lot of the reasons why people don't enter their own business or startup is because they feel if they left their private sector job, they wouldn't have that security of, um, of cash flow and income coming in. Um, but if you really feel passionate about the product or the service or the concept, then really start putting together a business plan and invest in the idea, not only your time but also uh, your funds because that is the only way that you can really break out of that shell. Right, so you're recommending that for people to overcome their personal fears, they should first start off by identifying an area that they're very passionate about or an idea yeah. they're very passionate about and then use that passion to drive them rather than being intimidated by the fear. Yeah, you see, I think one thing that drives happiness for a person when they're choosing a career or a business is passion, uh, profits and purpose. If you're really building a long-term business, then find something that you're passionate about and that you can find purpose with. I like that you're mentioning that because it's possible to make profits with any idea as long as you're giving value. Yes. Because money is a function of value, isn't it? Yeah. And then as long as you're adding value to people's lives, you'll automatically be earning money from it. Yes. But what really keeps you driving in the long run is your passion for whatever you're doing. Exactly. And when you have the passion, you automatically will invest the hours, be yeah. it the 10,000 hours to develop the talent in it or to make it sustainable in the market and so That's on right. and so forth. That's right. So, Kao, before you started Groupon, you were a highly successful investment banker in Macquarie Bank. So, what was it that made you actually quit to start Groupon? When I joined Macquarie or just investment banking, I felt that career would equip me with the skill set that I can then later take onto the road and create my own startup. So, you know, investment banking teaches you a lot of skills. A, communication, B, how to value businesses, and C, how to um, derive value from businesses. So, that was a logical first step for me before I started my business. Uh, but all, later on, I guess when the global financial crisis hit, a lot of the reasons I had for joining investment banking suddenly disappeared. That was, for me, a great turning point to start looking at other opportunities. If it's in a different company or a different industry or a startup. And that's what led me to start up the group buying side in Singapore. Which is like a tremendous success because he was acquired for a reported amount of $24 million in just seven months. What do you think are some of the reasons that drove this quick success? So in terms of passion, purpose and profits, I was very passionate about this business concept. So this idea of group buying where you're creating a win-win partnership for both merchants and consumers. And um, in terms of purpose, I felt like I was contributing to the development of e-commerce in Asia. Um, you know, we were the first group buying site in Singapore and that first mover advantage was very helpful when it came to the acquisition uh, because we, we were able to land a lot of the top brands, a lot of, uh, um, a lot of scale with our subscribers. 
But at the end of the day, when Groupon approached us, um, you know, they and, and decided to to partner with us instead of our competitors. I think what they were looking for is a very strong management team, and to know that we valued um, a lot of similar things to them, which includes um, featuring the best brands um, on our website, also offering the best customer service, um, and with the decades of experience that my management team had, it really raised the bar and. It, it, it gave Groupon the comfort that we are a great logical partner for them. Some people would say that the end goal to starting a business is to get it acquired by the end of the day. What do you think about that? Mm. See, to be honest, I don't think that should be the end goal. When I started Be Economic, I never ever actually had the end goal of being acquired. I actually saw this as being a great business model, a really exciting uh, model that would create this win-win partnership for, for merchants and consumers. Um, never throughout the first six months when I launched did I ever think that, hey, maybe this company would get acquired. It was more later down the track when I realized the need to raise funding uh, in order to scale up my subscriber base and to scale up my team. That's when I realized, okay, maybe I really should look out for investors. Right. So the driving motivator for the agreement of acquisition is because you want to do grow it beyond what it was already and then the acquisition of the partnership exactly. will help to drive it further to yeah. add value to other people. Right. And the other thing that you're looking for is a competitive advantage. Mm -hmm. um, so group buying sites um, back in 2010 in Singapore uh, was such an easy business model to, to run by yourself. So all you really need is an internet connection and uh, someone who can code websites and then someone to close deals with merchants. Really, it was that simple. So with that simplicity, that, that led to a lot of market entrance. Um, at one point, there were over 100 competitors in Singapore. So our market share um, started to shrink because of all these competitors uh, coming in and, you know, B economic not having such a particularly strong competitive advantage. So there was a point um, in our development as a company where I realized I really need a lot of funds in order to scale up the business faster than the other competitors could. What we were looking for is a, a logical partner that um, could that, that we could leverage off their technology platform and obviously also their marketing expertise so that we could scale up our subscriber base. Scaling up the subscriber base really was for us um, a huge asset at the end of the day. It's interesting that you mentioned getting funds because mm -hmm. some people use the lack of funding or capital as the reason for not starting their business. Do you think having capital is essential to starting a business? So you can raise capital through many sources, um, whether it's through your friends, family, fools, or uh, <laughs> later on angel investors. Um, it doesn't have to come from your own pocket. So I don't think if you have a lack of funds, that should not be in itself a reason not to launch your business. Yeah, Because if you have a really valuable idea, you really need to get that onto the market and find ways to fund it. Right, and I guess there's always ways to start an idea, get it rolling without any capital, isn't it? Because for my business, it's a zero capital startup. And what I did was to just started the blog, you know, the beginning, I mean, zero startup course. Right. And just started writing and sharing and just focusing on adding value to people's lives. That's exactly right. So there are some people who feel like they have family obligations right. and they need to ensure financial stability before they ever start a business. What advice would you give for them? Often I've seen situations where, uh, say, a married couple um, is looking to start a business. One person would maintain their, their, their job and their career and, and, and that stability of income while the other person will go and start up uh, the new business. So I think there are ways around it. Um, more importantly, if you have a fallback plan, if your business does not succeed, uh, that is absolutely key as well, just to have that fallback plan. Right. I love that you mentioned planning because I think at the end of the day, no matter what your goal is or what are the barriers that you're facing, as long as you have a plan, a step-by-step -step plan that guides you through moving from point A to point B, you'll eventually get there, isn't it? It's all about transition and getting where you want to be. Even if it's baby step, one day at a time, you'll yep. still move closer and closer there at one point. Absolutely right. In your journey of running Economic and mm -hmm. now Groupon, what were the key challenges that you faced and how did you overcome that? Wow. I think the very initial challenge is the uncertainty of whether I should give up everything I have to start up this business. So I was based in New York City um, and I didn't know many people in Singapore. So to leave my job, leave my business school studies and to move to a completely new country where I only had about one or two friends, it was a huge step and I think that was a big challenge. But again, I had some savings um, that I, I was willing to invest in this business idea and also I had the true passion 
um, in, in this concept. I really knew it would work here. The next um, challenge, obviously, was when we were meeting our merchants and describing to them the, the business model, pitching to them, we faced a lot of rejection. Almost 9 out of 10 merchants who met me um, rejected me along the way. And it was very tough. It was heart-wrenching to, to feel that, wow, I went from an awesome career, investment banking, well, what was an awesome career, into now basically door knocking on the hot streets of Singapore, trying to uh, convince people to sign deals with me. Uh, in and suits, then, no less. In suits as well. So right. I was sweating out in, in, uh, in the streets of Singapore. And, and I, if I came home without a signed contract, I would feel disheartened. But then again, it was always the passion and the, the, the inert belief that this was a great idea and I knew it was going to work. If myself, if, if I had a business, a restaurant or a spa, and someone approached me with this group buying concept, I would have definitely signed up with them. So it was that belief in the market, the belief in the model that just kept me driving forward. And what do you think was the key things you did that eventually led to the first deal being signed and subsequent deals being signed? One of the key things is be absolutely persistent. So, and, and I also realize that it is a bit of a numbers game. We're in the, the business of doing sales. So the more leads you have, the higher the chance that you will get a conversion. So it was working very long hours, meeting as many merchants as possible and trying your best to convert one or two of them. Then once you convert them, then one or two of them, then you, you take that success as a case study, um, uh, which will give you some more credibility when you meet the next merchant and so on. I love that because I think a lot of people are afraid of rejection. So what they do in order to prevent facing rejection is they don't approach anybody at all or they are very selective for the people that approach. Mm -hmm. But like you said, it's a numbers game at the end of the day. You ensure that there's a large volume of people that you approach, plus you ensure each interaction yeah. is of quality in nature so that you increase your possibility of acceptance exactly. at the end of the day. Exactly. And, and actually, the very first merchant that signed with us, um, she was an American. So she had not heard about group buying or group on, but uh, when she heard the concept and she knew that I was from New York, you know, there was that instant connection and that really helped. So mm -hmm. sometimes, you are not going to get the best meeting uh, the first time or the first 10 or the first 100 times but there will, if you really believe in the idea and, and the, the concept is, uh, is really proven um, then eventually you'll find someone who will just click with the idea and take you on board trying to understand what your merchant's needs are and to let them know that you are here as a partner um, to create value for them right. it really should be a win-win mm -hmm. uh, partnership what do you think are the key things it takes to succeed in business today? I think tenacity yeah. uh, is one thing. So you're bound to fail in, in many ways, whether it is the entire business that's going to fail or you've made a decision that later um, proved to be uh, inadequate. You are bound to fail and just recognize that. Recognize that you're going to fail, you're going to be rejected, but be tenacious enough to get back up and keep on pursuing your goals. Keep on driving towards that end goal of setting up a very successful business or creating an awesome partnership with that wonderful merchant or satisfying that customer, doing everything you can to do that. I think the other thing that today's business world requires is a, a bit of flexibility. Yeah, The world is changing so fast, so quickly before our eyes, not only driven by technology, but um, you know, marketing, the way advertising is done and, and bringing it back to technology, Google Glasses, you know, that's that's going to create a whole new market. So if you want to be opportunistic, just try and foresee how these technology improvements um, can advantage uh, society. I love that you mentioned tenacity because a lot of my readers and my past clients, they see failure as the end. Like once you fail once, that's the end and you right. know, I'm just not cut off for business. I'm not going to do anything at all. I'm going to go back to my career, my full-time job and just stick to stability. But the thing is failure is what we learn from, isn't it? I mean, it's right. part and parcel of life and nothing is a failure unless we define it to be a failure. That's a great point. Exactly. And it really just should be a learning lesson at the end of the day. Okay, so thanks for the interview today, Kyle. Anytime. Be sure to subscribe to the channel, youtube.com slash Celestine Chua and stay tuned for the next interview. Thanks, guys.